let's build a more optimized medallion. And so we have the geometry that we brought in from Maya from the previous course. And I actually have one of the base medallions from that course. If you don't have that, that's fine. Just bring in a cylinder and you just want to move it into a position to match the high res. So if we turn on our template, you can see here are our two pieces. So let me just turn off reference and I'll select both of these and we can isolate these. So if you don't have the low res piece and I made a point of it in the last course to save one that had the history still on it uh, from the one that I exported over. And so you can go ahead and just create one, put it into position. And then I'm just gonna, mine is a little bit off as far as the rotation goes. So I'm just gonna rotate it slightly and just match it up a little bit better with the position of the actual sculpted piece. So let me get it kind of closer there and then I'll move it kind of back. And we want to see those kind of peeking out all over. Looks like they're a little bit, I think I moved down a little bit more. All right. Now with this medallion, it's interesting because most of the detail is across this flat surface and that's really easy to get. I mean, we could use this high res if we wanted to, depending on the parameters of what we're working on, the shot that we're working on. If we can use a high res piece, then we can certainly do that. Uh, but I'm going to make something that's a little bit more optimized. And for the game course, it's sort of parallel to this. Uh, it's even more important. But the thing about this medallion is, let me go ahead and freeze my transformations on this so I can kind of move it off here. So the surface detail on this is going to be easy to get. We could get that with a normal map or displacement map. Uh, the the problem when working with a lower res is the silhouette. Okay, so you can see that if we were to use just a cylinder, we could get this detail, but it would be much harder to get this unless we did something like a displacement map. So what I want to do is go ahead and figure out how to get this silhouette. And so to do that, I want to increase the number of subdivisions along the axis. And so I think if I remember back to when I created this, I believe it's going to be 72 is going to be the number that will give us one of these for each bit that is poking up. And so let's take the radius down a little. Oops. Let's take it to maybe 0.24. And I just want to kind of look at this and we may need to rotate it a little bit. So I'm kind of put the, I'll kind of put the, um, the lines in the center there, kind of like that. And I'll just take a look and kind of see if that's working. I think that is, it looks like if it's not, you'll see lines will start to show up in the middle of these raised areas, but it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Let me go ahead and I'm going to move this forward and down a little bit and just match it up. All right. So now we can come in and let's take this height down a little bit. Maybe like 0.4. Again, we'll sort of move it back a little bit. Let's look at our subdivisions on the cap. I'm going to grab this line on the top, very top. And I'm just going to scale it out. Kind of right out there. Now let's extrude out the center. I'm just going to select those polygons. I'll deselect any of them that are on the back. Okay. And let's extrude those out. I'm just going to pull them up a little bit. Take our divisions down. And then I can take this outer edge. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. And then we can select the polygons on the sides. So I'll just click one, shift, double click to select all of them. I'm going to do another extrude. This time though, I'm going to turn off, keep faces together. And let's add a little bit of thickness here. Maybe 0.25 or 0 0.3, 0 0.35. Take our divisions down to zero. I'm going to scale these in. Kind of like that. Scale them down. Let's scale them in the X. And let's click on this little button here and I'm just going to kind of move them back slightly and that'll at least let you have a little bit more of that silhouette of those. Okay. And then you want to create a UV layout for those as well. So we can come in here, 
And I'm just going to do a quick automatic map. This is the back. So I'm going to care more about the front. And then on all these pieces, there are, are lots of ways you can do this, but, but when we have something like this, where there's pieces that are all sticking off, one of the ways you can do it is to take each little knob that's coming off and just UV those. So I would take these two sides and go ahead and stitch the, the ends of those on. Okay. And then you could stitch those together, sew them, and you could do the same thing here. You could select all those and then stitch those. And that'll give you the whole thing. You probably want to cut these off first because they're going to go on one of these. Alternatively, you could also include the front facing part of this and then not have those on the little knobs, but you do want to create a UV layout, UV layout for this particular piece because we want to have a nice big map for it. All right. So next we're going to start to assemble the actual UV layouts for our pieces so that we can get to texturing. And so we're going to look at the gold pieces. We're going to put all the gold pieces on one texture map. And so that we can treat those as one material and, and get the gold looking like we want it to. So we'll do that next.